You know, when we started this channel almost three years ago, our main intent was to become like a, a resource, you know, a, 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 a source of information and inspiration for guys that are kind of left out of the loop, you know, the car population that like works with regular means and has limited skills with just learning, you know. We leave the 25%, you know, the guys who have a lot of money and, and whatnot and have experience, we leave them, leave them to the other channels. But ours, the intent was to do for the beginner and for the guy who's struggling, the guy who needs inspiration. And you know, over time you kind of tend to get away from that a little bit because you start to get wrapped up in, in the excitement of building your own projects and doing all of this stuff. You forget that a good portion of your audience is there to learn, right? They're, that's, you know, YouTube. YouTube even tells you when you start a channel, be useful. You know, if you want to be successful on YouTube, be useful, have useful content. So that's what we try to do. So I'm working on the wiring on our Miata. I got the taillights all wired up. And uh, I says, you know, wait, this is the perfect time to do one of those useful videos, something that's useful for the beginner or even the guy who's been around a while and may not know all the little nuances or something. Wiring, okay? And wiring is so universal because this particular thing that I'm gonna talk about now literally applies to every single car, project, truck, motorcycle, airplane, tank, doesn't matter what you're building, this applies across the board. And it's mostly these, these solderless connectors. So up until about 25 years ago, there were two ways to make a splice, right? To splice wires. And for the most part, the, the typical backyard guy would take a piece of wire, strip it with his teeth, like so, wrap them together, fold it over, and wrap it with tape. Now, that was the backyard way, guy way of doing things. Now, if you were a little more sophisticated, you know, a professional, you would solder, in which case you would take the strands of wire, which, which these are all screwed up now, and you'd lay them together like this, you'd overlap them, right? And then you would solder that joint, and that would be, and then to finish that off, you would use shrink tubing. So the shrink tubing, which obviously you put on before you make your solder, uh, the shrink tubing becomes the insulation. But then about 25 years ago, these things started popping up. These uh, solderless connectors. Actually, before these popped up, these guillotine co connectors came up. And you'll find these like in a lot of trailer install kits. Don't ever use these. Seriously, there's never a reason to use this. These are really bad. Okay? Though I, in my mind, those fall under the same heading as, as the electrician's wire nuts that people use. Right? So, the solderless connector is, is the, the, the magic wiring cure-all. And they come in three common sizes, at least the ones that we're gonna come across. The red, the smallest, the blue, the medium, and the yellow, the largest. And you're gonna find that in most, I'm gonna say 75% of your automotive applications, this red one is gonna match the wire that you're using. And of course, you know, slightly bigger, you know, and even bigger than that. So there's no mystery as to how these things work, right? Obviously, you take your wire and you, you slip it in like so, okay? And then you take your crimper and it's important, these universal crimping tools are great, but it's important you have a good one because the cheap ones, they just, as you squeeze, they move all over the place and they, they don't work. But this is one of the better ones. And you crimp it, boom, like that. And I always give them a second crimp, okay? And that's it. You're done, right? Not quite. These were never intended to be used exactly like that. 90%, I, I look at the wiring on, 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 I can't tell you how many cars I see, right? And I'm always looking at mechanical details and, and you know, because I'm a mechanic. And I always see these things misused. Misused meaning that th these are standalone, meaning that if somebody wants to splice these two wires together, okay, they're just going to put the, the solderless connector in, in between, make your splices or, or your, your crimps, and then call it a day. No. You have to use shrink tubing on these. They're intended to be used with shrink tubing. And I'll show you why. So, 
as you can see, there is no seal to this setup here, okay? Once the strands of wire are captured in and crimped, there's no seal. It's not hermetically sealed. So therefore, any moisture in the in the air, you know, humidity, and you know how copper wire, how, how it eventually turns over time, you know, uh, it gets in there and it'll, it will deteriorate the connection. But that's besides the point. If you just slip the connector over and give it a crimp, you're not adding, you're, not, you're, not, you're taking away the strength of the insulation. So what's happening is that over time, especially in a high vibration use, like under the hood or, or a place where things are moved around, this is always moving. And eventually it will cut through those strands. Or at least, if not cut through them, it'll thin them out enough so that the amperage load through the wire is more than just the few strands that are left are going to, going to want to hold. They get hot and they'll separate. And also, this was never intended to hold a wire. You know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to crimp. I'm just, just showing you for the sake of argument. It pulls right out. You need to use shrink tubing. So first things first. You want the length of the stripped wire to, to meet approximately halfway along the connector. So this is already a little bit too long. So we're going to trim this. So now you see where where this bulges out. Okay, so the, the wire with the insulation fits into that. And give it a twist. Okay, and now that's the approximate distance you want the wire to sit in there. When you crimp it, never crimp at the end, at the edge over here. You always want to crimp halfway between the middle point and that. So right about there. Now, the reason for that is because if you crimp right on the edge at the end of the metal contact it'll act as a guillotine and it'll cut through the wires ask me how i know this i just had this problem three days ago four days ago i stuck a, a stereo in our cherokee and i bought one of them cheap universal harnesses so i was crimping wires real quick to get it done and i crimped hard enough on the edge that I guillotined through the, through, through the metal wires, but not through the insulation. It drove me crazy. I couldn't figure out what the problem was. And that's what it was. I was just rushing and wasn't paying attention. So you want to make your crimp halfway between the center and where it flares out to meet the wire. Now the shrink tubing comes in different sizes. You've got, uh, this is the 5 16 So this would be if you're using these big yellow ones, you want to use the 5 16 this is quarter inch. The quarter inch is perfect for these red and blue ones. So, let's make a, a whole crimp, a, a whole uh, setup over here. Want a little bit more than that. Give them a twist. Before you put the wires together, slide your shrink tubing over it. Make a connection. Give it a crimp. I give them a double crimp. And you slide this over. And heat it up. And so now what this is doing is this is backing up the insulation. So now when this wire is pulled, you're not pulling on the strands that are that are in in this in the solder's connector. You're actually pulling on the shrink tubing, and this increases its strength drastically. Always hit your sidler's connections with shrink tubing. I can't tell you how important that is. 
Now there are some times that I deliberately will not put shrink tubing on something. If you ever look at one of my cars and you'll see a, a, a solderless connector and it's got wires to it but no shrink tubing on it, it means that it's a temporary circuit. It means it's something that I just wanted to set up because I wasn't sure how I wanted to make it complete yet or I'm testing a, a, a thing or even better than that. I'll, I'll install something on one of my cars just to get it running or get it moving and then I'll leave it. Yeah, I'll have, a, I'll have a list of things. I have to check this, I have to check that, check the other thing. And then I won't touch the car for six months, I won't touch it for a year, I won't touch it for two years. I completely forget that I had done things. As soon as I see the bare solderless connector, I know, oh, okay, the fuel pump. I have to do whatever I've got to do to the fuel pump. So I'll leave them occasionally bare as a reminder to myself or just as a temporary fix. But if you're doing a permanent repair, there's never any reason to need to use the shrink tubing. So that's it, like really simple basics and the most universal thing there is. And actually, honestly, the most misused thing, I think, in the whole world of machinery. So I hope you got something out of that. We'll try to do some more real basic stuff as we go forward. I gotta get back to work on this. I'll see you tomorrow.